It's f-
because my son just turned five months but it took me some time to really get myself together and as we go through this video i think you'll understand me a little bit more i think growing up when i thought of pregnancy i just thought of just extreme happiness everything being perfect nothing bothering you just just happiness best chapter you could ever think of i never thought of the worst case scenario i never thought of i just never thought about those things and i'm sure some of the things i'm going to mention in the video a lot of aspiring moms to be in the future have not thought about or new moms didn't think about or maybe they did i don't know but yeah as you saw in the video i was induced at 39 weeks one week earlier than my original due date so usually when you're induced, there has to be a reason. Your doctor's not just going to induce you. I mean, of course you can ask, but usually you have to be induced for a reason. Throughout my pregnancy, I had a lot of complications. And I wasn't really expecting that as my first pregnancy because I've never had like any abortions. I've never had anything like that. Trying to maintain my weight and carry a child and everything like that was a lot and i know you're thinking how is it a lot you're pregnant eat yeah you do but there's certain things that just affect it like stress i was under a lot of stress and i had got so attached to my son my boyfriend and i got so attached to my son my family and we we're just so invested and i already you know as i mentioned in one of my other videos i already was experiencing like blood in my sauna or where I could possibly miscarry so I just did not want anything else to just you know make me have a miscarriage because that's just I, oh my god I don't think I could do it that I, w I think I would have really been heartbroken like I've been through a lot in my life but I think like I would have been really heartbroken from that 
so I just thank God. So boom, but let's fast forward. So going to the high risk doctor, we find out every week we're going back to back. Am I going to be induced? Am I going to be induced? So both of my doctors, they make the decision that yes, you're going to be induced. And this is the plan. Honestly, I was a little nervous to be induced, but at the same time, I was kind of happy and relieved because I felt like, you know, I had some of the control back because at least I can prepare more. I can know the day. I can know the time. I know it's scheduled. I don't have to worry. Whereas, like, if my water would just break, me and Benji are going to be like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, like, what are we going to do, you know? I think that would have been a little bit more scary. So I felt it was a little bit better because I had some control. Even though I still like procrastinated to get ready and make my bag. Even though I kept writing down to do my bag for weeks. But I was in my nesting phase so I had that part done. Really quickly, your nesting phase is when like you just know your baby's about to come soon. Because you just get into this whole mode where you just want to clean everything. Like top to bottom, the crevice of the corners everything because you're in your nesting phase and you're just i think you're just preparing like i think it's just something spiritual that goes on and you're just literally like preparing for new life to come into the world it's amazing i love the nesting phase okay and then when i did pack my hospital bag i literally brought my whole life just to find out that half of the stuff i brought i did not even need but what i will say when you're packing it's oh my god heaven sent i think it's called um witch hazel pads girl girl i just saved your life when you're going through your postpartum part after you deliver though if you have natural birth you witch hazel pads and they have like this spray i think it's dermoplast i'm telling you you need that when you're going through your postpartum part of your delivery after your delivery that is a lifesaver. I'm telling you, two things. Witch hazel pads, dermoplast. I hope I'm saying it right. If not, I will re rewrite it in the description or something. But that is a lifesaver. I'm not sure what happens if you have a C-section because I didn't have a C-section. I had natural birth. So, yeah. So fast forward, we're driving to the hospital. While we were driving to the hospital, I did not record. And honestly, I did not want to. I was very nervous. I was getting very anxious. I was getting like really scared. And when I get like that, I just need to be with myself and the Lord. And you know, Benji, my family, whoever around. I don't, I just want to, I want privacy. So I did not record that part. Scheduled. I remember it was a Thursday at 12 o'clock midnight and I don't know what time I arrived I don't think I was that late but I was late you know especially because Benji had to park the car but don't you know see <laughs> you know how God works I got there they weren't even ready for me so yeah serves some <laughs> serve stuff but no i really gotta be on time after waiting in the waiting room for a little bit with all of my family i believe just for that night to stay over it was just my sister benji's mom my mom and my little brother so when you go through the process there's two rooms your first room that they put you in is like the pre part when you're being induced you're going through the labor a little bit and then eventually they move you into the room you're going to deliver in. But it's like a waiting game because, you know, everybody's popping out babies. So you got to wait your turn. So, yeah. There's different ways to start your induction. So there's the pill method. So they, like, place a pill inside your vagina. And that starts up the labor a little bit. Or the contractions. Or they can put a balloon in there and when the water can pop. That I didn't want to do and I was praying to God I didn't have to do it and thank God I did not. And then I think, I hope I'm saying it right. I think it's Pitocin that is just, um, it comes through fluid through an IV and that's another way that they started up. I think... In the beginning, after they finally, you know, 
got a good vein they started off with the pill so you know the first 30 minutes i'm like oh this ain't that, this ain't that bad i don't know what people be talking about as it progresses on through the night i am in so much pain already and i'm just like okay at first i wasn't in that much pain so i was like you know babe you could take a nap don't worry but then I ended up being really pissed off with him because I don't know. Little did I know I was I was I was about to feel a lot of pain, and I wanted him. <laughs> but it's okay because I had Benji's mom to really coach me through it when I was like going through because I was very, I was very upset <laughs> that first night when I was experiencing the contraction not upset with benji just upset with the pain <laughs> i think i don't know if they started the pitocin up the same night or they started early in the morning with the pitocin but when they started the pitocin things really started to kick off and by the time everything had escalated my contractions my labor i was in so much pain I was trying to bounce on a ball. I was trying to do all kind of things. And honestly, when you're going through labor, you don't really want to sit down. You're exhausted and you're tired and you want sleep, but you really don't want to sit down. I don't know how to explain it. You just got to experience it. You want to do everything. And then it always feels like you have to take the biggest poop of your life. But you don't. That's just letting you know that the baby's almost coming. I remember being so upset with the nurses because I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was in so much pain. And I just kept thinking I had to use the bathroom, but I did not have to use the bathroom. Now I know, but I just really, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't take it. I was only at one centimeter when my doctor had checked and she barely could check because I was in so much pain and I couldn't take it. I really wanted to be strong and all those things and not get an epidural. So I, was, I didn't say anything about it, but my doctor was just like, it's okay, you can have an epidural. It will help you, don't worry. And honestly, I couldn't take the pain. So I went and got me an epidural. And the epidural actually didn't hurt as bad as people say. I was really nervous about it, but it went really well. Is, baby, once you get the epidural, it's all gonna be beautiful again. Like, yeah, you're still gonna feel things, but it's, it's gonna be much better. It's gonna be so much better, sis. It's gonna be so much better. Get the epidural. Get it. But just make sure you know, you know, like, what could possibly happen, like, back pains in the future and stuff like that. But I was in so much pain, I did not even care about stuff like that. I also wasn't able to sleep for so, like, all night into the half of the next day. So when I got my epidural, I was relieved because I could finally go to sleep. I didn't have to keep on throwing up and being in all this pain and just feeling terrible. I, I, it, was, it, was, it was, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So my epidural just made me feel so much better. So much better. Heaven sent get an epidural. I'm telling you. I gotta keep saying it because I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I always say that I feel like my son was just a gift from God because I don't feel like I had as bad as a bad of a labor as I probably could have had. It was very, very, very well. After I got my epidural, I feel like things started to speed up and they were going in the right direction, which I was really happy and really fortunate for because sometimes when you get an induction and it doesn't always go the way it's planned. Like it can go the total opposite way and you can end up having an emergency C-section and I was terrified of that. Actually, my induction was going really, really well. Like really, really well, better than I had expected. And so things were picking up pretty quickly. And next thing you know, I was at six centimeters, 
and then I was dilating at 16 years and then the next thing you know I felt this rush to my butt like it felt like I had to take the biggest poop of a lifetime like I can't even explain it like the biggest poop of a lifetime but it wasn't a poop it was the baby ready to come and I kept telling everybody because like it kind of felt like when I was at 16, 6 centimeters it kind of felt like it was so close to everyone else they didn't believe me when I was telling them like no I think the baby's coming I think the baby I just kept saying it it's like I almost knew I just had a feeling in my gut in my instincts that I was just like I know it just has to be the baby so I'm like call the nurse call the doctor call the nurse call the doctor and the nurses come in they're taking it easy because they really think it's so close together timing so they're like uh oh, she's probably just asking for us because she wants some more ginger ale or whatever we got for her but no so i'm like no please get my doctor please get my doctor so they get the doctor she checks and she's like oh yep we're gonna we're about to gonna have to deliver a baby basically the baby has to get far enough down for you to be able to deliver and the head has to be facing downwards like the legs can't be downward or it'll be a bridge baby and they have to get c-section so i'm so thankful my baby was turned the right way she went in to check how far i was dilated at she could feel the baby's head so that meant it was go time so then i was nervous but i was ready so then i think my doctor was trying to like you know switch with another doctor and i was like oh hell double hockey stick no you know what i mean <laughs> double hockey stick i'm tired it's late guys but yeah like i was like no no absolutely not especially because the doctor was a guy he was rude so I was like no my doctor came back in and she decided to finish out the journey with me and i love my doctor to death oh my god i love my doctor she is the best the best I knew it was go time she told me to pick two people obviously you already know benji was staying and then i chose my mom because it was her first grandbaby and you know i didn't want her to miss it and stuff like that but it was really hard because I wanted everyone to be in the room for that moment, but only two people can be in the room while they're actually delivering the baby. And I understand it for so many reasons. Safety purposes. Once everybody leaves, they're like preparing everything around me. Where the baby's gonna lay when he comes out. I guess where my placenta's gonna go when I birth plus into two like everything is setting everything up and i'm just getting so nervous but i'm getting excited and i'm just like oh my goodness but i can't explain to you how i felt i just felt like oh my god it's good time i was scared i was nervous i was excited i was all of the above it's a feeling that is literally indescribable I when I was pushing it was the most tiring feeling in the world. I always felt like I was getting so close but the baby was still not coming out and I was beginning to feel like really tired and frustrated. And I just kept saying, oh, I want to give up, I want to give up. And Benji was just coaching me through it. My mom was yelling, and, you got this, you got this, push hard. Act like the Hulk, act like the Hulk, come on, come on, act like the Hulk. You got it. I don't know why she told me to act like the Hulk, but, yeah. <laughs> but, I was trying to listen to them, but I couldn't help it. I kept crying through it because I was so tired. Pushing is tiring. And sometimes it can go on for a long time. And then, lo and behold, I think it has to be 20 minutes later. 
but it felt like full. It felt like 20 minutes, but it was actually like 45 minutes later, I believe. But it felt like 20 minutes. It just felt so quick. It felt quick when I was pushing, pushing and I kept on getting closer and closer and closer to the baby almost coming out. My doctor said, come on, come on, come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. We feel the hair, feel the hair, feel the hair. She took my hand and let me feel the hair so I would know, like, it's okay, it's gonna happen. Like, it's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Just relax, it's gonna happen, breathe. The nurse was like, come on, come on, give a big push, give a big push, give a big push. I knew when I took my last push, like, I knew the push. I was like, yeah, this is the push. You'll know when it's the push. Because it just felt like it took everything out of me to push that last push. I knew that was the push. And lo and behold, I got a second degree tear from that push. And after I gave birth to my placenta, my doctor had to sew up my, I'm going to say Tootsie Roll, because I don't want to get this video flagged. And lo and behold, my Tootsie Roll was so swollen, like... I never seen my tootsie roll that swollen at all of my life. It was just, whoa, whoa. I couldn't walk, it was so much blood, oh my goodness. And then I pushed him out and I just heard crying. And then I began to cry. And I couldn't see anything at first, I could only see light. I just had to close my eyes and really focus. I just had to close my eyes and really focus. But all I could see is lights. And so when I took that last push and I heard crying, it just felt like an outer body experience in the sense of just like, I, f I got to feel the whole moment and it just felt like angels were around. It just felt beautiful. I don't know how to explain it. It was a beautiful moment. And as I heard the crying, I just, I began to cry. And laid him on my chest. I was just crying. It was incredible. And like, I'm not looking at the camera because I'm really thinking about that moment and that day. And it's just like, to this day, and I think forever until I die, like, that's just going to be one of the best days of my life by far. By far in my life. It will always be one of the best days of my life. It will always be one of my greatest accomplishments. Son, you are my greatest accomplishment every day, all day. It gets me emotional. Just hearing that cry for the first time. Just seeing Benji's face, like everything, my mom, everything. It was so emotional, so beautiful. It was perfect. I just kept crying. I was in awe. And I really understood like wow god is real god has to be real because he gave you to me it's just one of those experiences that i really just felt god's presence in the room in that atmosphere and i was just in awe i was in awe I was in awe. I remember doing my first feeding of the baby. I was in awe. I was in awe. I remember just me and Benji just looking at each other and stuff. And right in the moment that Benji was going to cry, I could feel he was going to cry. The doctor was like, oh, cut the umbilical cord a little bit early on before like when it was around the time you had to cut the umbilical cord because it has to happen quick i knew that was a moment when it was getting emotional and we couldn't fully get into that feel because you know the doctor kind of <laughs> made him snap out of it but after everything when the first feeding i was in awe i kept crying and they were tears of joy it was the most happiness i ever felt in my life 22, my whole 22 years on this earth, I was in awe, and I keep saying it because I, I was in awe, I can't explain to you fully how it felt, I can only wish for everybody to experience that love, 
I remember just saying to myself and promising to God, my son, that I was always going to protect him. I was always going to be there for him. He was always going to be enough. He was always going to be loved unconditionally no matter what. There was nothing he could do to change my love or erase my love. And I just became so emotional because when I became a parent, it was the greatest love I ever felt in my whole life. to have my dad but that was his choice and I had my mom you know I won't get into that but I just felt like wow how could someone have a child and not be there or not want to love them with every ounce of their being and I was looking at my son and I was saying, I, I'd give my life for him. I'd do anything for him. It was a love that was so pure, so unconditional. He was perfect. He was perfect. perfect. Let me do the whole crying on camera thing. I don't even do the crying in general to my friends, to my closest of friends, unless I, you know, it's an emotional moment, I, you know, but I don't really open up like that, but it's hard for me to not have such a raw emotion right now, because when I tell you that was one of the best days of my life, my son changed my whole life, he saved my life, like, he made me want to live. He makes me want to wake up every day and live to the fullest and not just exist. He restored purpose back into my life when I felt like I was fading away. People say all the time, I thank God twice for my son and my children. And I used to just be like, uh, oh, you know, you don't have kids yet, you just go, well, that's, that's cute. When it took me to have my own child to understand so many things that I once did not understand. And it became clear. So much became clear. I thank God for my son. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest. I love him so much, so, so much. Um, some of my family came to visit the baby in the hospital after I gave birth. I remember my aunt coming and she bought me a tuna sandwich and I swear that tuna sandwich tasted like everything because I hadn't been able to eat in hours, like a day. <laughs> So that sandwich tastes so like everything. I thank God for her. Oh. She knew what I needed before I knew what I needed because I was so hungry and just she was just came and she had food and she was just you know she just she had it together. Everybody joined. And her sister had came from work, rushed from work to come into the baby, and we just were able to just soak in the moment as family. It was really beautiful. It was really beautiful. I wanted some of my friends to come, but everything was so overwhelming and just I wanted to take everything in, so I was just like, okay, maybe I should wait. Part of was a little overwhelming, that part, because I was in so much pain, so it was just really hard. I was wondering, like, how am I going to do with the baby my first night? How are me and Benji going to do with the baby our first night? But I had faith in him because he was doing really, really good with the baby. I was like, wow, I need to get on that type of time. But I was just so exhausted. 
the night that we had to spoon the baby, the first nurse that we got, she was so rude and nasty. Ugh. Uh, honestly, yeah, some of my nurses were nasty, but some of my nurses were really, really kind. And when we took the baby that night, I remember just being like, wow. Me and Benji were taking turns, like, holding the baby after, you know, everybody left. Because our family had stayed, like, the whole time during my labor, during everything. So they were really tired. They were exhausted. The baby wasn't trying to eat. And his sugars were low. The nurse let me know if it kept happening, he might have to be going to the NICU. So I kept trying to get him to eat. I did not want him to go to NICU. I was terrified of that idea or not being able to leave with him, you know, when I'm the same day that I'm discharged. But unfortunately, he just wouldn't eat. And so he had to go to the NICU. I was devastated. The baby wasn't trying to eat. And his sugars were low. The nurse let me know if it kept happening, he might have to be going to the NICU. So I kept trying to get him to eat. I did not want him to go to the NICU. I was terrified of that idea or not being able to leave with him, you know, when I'm the same day that I'm discharged. But unfortunately, he just wouldn't eat. And so he had to go to the NICU. I was devastated. The nurses kept letting me know that I could always go down to the NICU to see him whenever I got ready and I got situated. I still wasn't able to walk, but let me tell you something. I got in my wheelchair and Benji pushed me and I made sure after I got myself together that I wanted to go see him. In fact, like I didn't think I even cared about getting myself together. I was just like, you know what, just put, put this rope like this and let's go. But it took me a little bit because when they first took the baby, they told me not to come down for a little bit because I pr it probably would really affect me to see everything at first. So they told me to wait a little bit, they'll tell me when I can come. And during that time, I was breaking down. I was breaking down. I was terrified of when I'm, I was terrified of the thought of being discharged without being able to take my baby home with me. That thought was crushing me. I was devastated because I never thought of that scenario. I don't think I did a lot of research about the NICU. I don't think I really heard other experiences like that before. Like I said, I only knew happy when it came to pregnancy perfection. I didn't know the other side. I was terrified of not being able to leave with my baby. And I just kept thinking when they first took him that morning, I just broke down. I completely broke down. Benji was being the strong one for us. And I just kept breaking down. I was devastated. The days passed and the decision was just that he wasn't ready to leave the same day that I would be discharged. I was crushed. I cried and I cried and I remember I stayed as long as I could until the night because I couldn't think of leaving him. I believe he stayed in the NICU for a total of six days and they felt like the longest six days of my life. I was there every single day. I did not tell anyone about it. I think the only people that knew was my mom, Benji's mom, my sister. Benji's sister and my little brother I did not want to share it I don't know at the time I was so embarrassed about it I thought it was my fault I thought I did something wrong I was so devastated it was just ugh. I think what got to me the most was just seeing them prick his little foot every single Mm, uh, different hours <laughs> this foot was so black and blue <laughs> and that was the first time
tie my phone like a real ball because I just wanted to take that pain away from him. He was so little. He was only, he was, when he was born he was only five pounds. He was so little so I'm just looking at this little person and I'm just like, oh my god, you're so strong, baby. It was so hard for me. really overwhelmed when I think about it. I remember just thinking, you're so, you're so, so, so strong, baby. Like, I wanted to take everything away from you, all the pain, all the crying, and I wanted it to be me that that was happening to. And the thing is, that what happened to him was so just an inconvenience because it was a matter of his sugars. Annoying. And the most aggravating part of the whole thing you'll never really know when the baby will come out because it all depends on them and their sugars if it goes back down so i remember just having my phone and keeping a note track and calling every hour the, the time at the time i wasn't there throughout the night and calling like a mad woman not sleeping just because i wanted to know if he was okay was he making progress? I wanted him to come home so bad and I feared what if he wasn't going to be able to come home for Christmas. I remember every day leading up to Christmas, Benji asked me, Babe, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? And I'd cry. And I'd say, I just want Baby. And everybody was writing me and congratulating me and I couldn't even focus because I was devastated. I couldn't I couldn't function. I couldn't function through that. He was so positive and his mom was so positive. They were like the rock and my sister, she was the rock for me and Benji during that time because I don't know what I would have done without them. They were so encouraging. I don't know what I would have done without them. My mom, she went to visit the baby as often as she could and my sister too, like they came very often while he was in there. It was a lot. Hindsight, God always does everything for a reason. At first, I didn't understand, and I was very upset. And I was like, God, why did I have to have an experience like this? I don't feel like I got the right experience that other women get to have. And I was really downtrodden. And then, oh, the irony is, my original due date was December 20th. Royal came home. December 19th at night time so it kind of felt like yeah he still came on his due date and honestly I needed that time because when after I gave birth I couldn't walk I it gave me more time to sit with the lactation consultant and you know learn how to breastfeed learn how to pump learn so much so I think it really prepared me for what I was about to learn next watching my baby fight every day just to go through these things his foot got punched so many times that it almost it looked blue it looks blue and i remember thinking like oh i was complaining when i was getting poked i'm like i would trade with him in a heart because i don't want him to get poked it was oh my goodness but i just remember thinking he's so strong and he's such a fighter he'll always fight through and he'll always come out on top and royal if you ever watch mommy's video i just want you to know that you're a fighter baby you're more than enough you always come out on top you're a champion you're a king and no matter what you triumph even when it looks like there's no no turning back there's there's nothing left there's no fight left you always 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 carry through
you always carry through and you are perfect in every single way and I love you so so much <sighs> overwhelming I just want to to thank you I was gonna say I want to say I'm sorry but I'm not gonna say I'm sorry because I think it's a beauty in my vulnerability right now it's a beauty in what I'm sharing because I know I'm not the only woman that has gone through that and has had a NICU baby and I remember seeing all these other babies and meeting all these other moms and seeing like your circumstance is not that bad speaking to these other moms praying with these other moms and I said you know what it could be worse the other moms kept me at ease they kept me peaceful I'm going to lie it was really sad for me at certain points just going in and seeing the babies like that seeing the moms I remember one of the one of the days I was Royals um, nursery was across from another baby's nursery and I think the heart had stopped beating or it, the heart was having problems and the mom was just breaking down literally crying on the ground on her knees and I, and Royal was sleeping, I think I'm looking over at Royal and I'm looking at her and I'm just like praying. I'm literally praying for her and praying that everything is going to be all right. The nurses come over, everybody's rushing the doctors, they're trying to make sure everything is, is fine. And I am just praying as hard as I can. Lo and behold, they fixed the problem. And I just wanted to go up to her and hug her and cry with her. But I don't want to overstep any boundaries. But it was just, oh, it's hard to see because it almost felt like, what if, what if this baby doesn't make it right now? And then I see that it was making me so emotional because I was just like, my whole pregnancy was just like, a, is your baby going to make it kind of thing for me? And so that moment in the NICU was like, come on, God. You know what I mean? Even if it's just the sugars, I was just hoping like, you know, just in my own mind, please don't let anything happen. Please don't let anything happen. So watching that woman gave me so much anxiety and it just, it made me feel so bad for her as well. Like it just, it was, it was too much. It was too much. I'm sorry. The Nikki was so sad as I get really emotional about it. And every time I think about it, I'm just like, thank God for his mighty hand of healing. Royal made it home in time before Christmas and I was I was ecstatic. <sighs> My first couple of days I would say um of being a mom, especially without Royal was very hard for different reasons, but we'll do that story time in another video. It was really hard. But overall I'm just so grateful for my son and one thing i just want you guys to be aware of too is postpartum depression you can kind of try to avoid it but it's just inevitable sometimes for certain people i think that was me for a while i was in denial and i didn't want to accept it so i just ignored it i ignored it to the core and I really hated when I would go to like checkups and they would like ask me questions about things like that. When I wanted to sing, it's kind of like I felt like I couldn't. And I'm still battling with that because I'm trying to sing sometimes if you like have me on Instagram. But I don't know, it's just not the same. Anyone that has been in the music industry or even been exposed a little bit to certain things you'll see sooner or later it's not all what it's cracked up to be that had caused me to get into depression i don't want to get into depth with that conversation but there's just so much that an artist goes through that people don't see and they only think like oh you you just started saying you just did this but it's literally been a process like for those who went to high school with me elementary school this has been something that I've been pursuing since a baby. So it gets tiring. The nose get tiring, but you gotta keep pushing. You can't give up. The like false promises from people, everything, it just gets really tiring. And 
just get suppressed a little bit along the way. And just having a baby, that only increases it. All the hormones, everything, it only increases it. Like, it only increases it. And many people don't understand. And their answer is probably just like, in the industry, don't have a baby. Right now, health is wealth to me, especially mental health. And I just want to take the time to heal. I don't care what nobody thinks. If they think I'm not doing this or I'm not working on this. I know what I'm doing. And that's all that matters. Those around me know what I'm doing. Know what I'm focusing on. And that's all that matters to me. As long as my son is proud of me. I'm proud of me. But I'm focused on my mental health. And I'm focused on getting through this postpartum depression. Because... You know, so I've heard some women can face it up to like two years. And so I'm just trying to kick this in the behind because I don't like to be sad. I'm a very happy person. I'm a very joyful, crazy outgoing, like always telling jokes kind of person. So I want to overcome this and pray for me, huh? I really hope that I said everything that I wanted or needed to say in this video and I hope that I touched on some things in my experience that would be eye-opening to new moms or aspiring moms or just women in general that we don't usually think about when it comes to the topic of pregnancy. And I hope that it just makes everyone more aware and... I just wish nothing but blessings for all women around the world. Children's Children are God's um, reward to us, it says in the Bible. So, I just pray that every woman be rewarded. So, sidebar, something I forgot to add. I literally got my birth control shot the day that I got discharged. I wasn't playing no games because me and my sister are 11 months apart so you know how that goes for the people that are 11 months apart and you guys are like twins but you're not twins you guys you know what I'm saying your parents couldn't wait mine couldn't wait and we need to mind our business because that's day business you know what I mean but yeah but I hope that it doesn't affect me in the future when Benji and I decide to have kids again because you know sometimes I could get a little nervous about birth control because like I'll think maybe you know maybe what if it affects like your fertility or whatever is meant to happen will happen by the grace of God and that's all I can say but for right now I'm not focused on that I'm focused on being the best mom that I can be to my king royal and I'm just focused on being the best me as well because in order to be the best mom, I need to be the best me because you have to fully be okay for you to fulfill the roles that you need to fulfill in your life. And so that's where I am. And I thought about speaking like how life is as a new mom in this video, but I believe that's a whole separate video because if you're a mom, you know why that's a whole separate video. And anything that I left out, please comment and ask me to speak on it. And follow me on Instagram and get in touch with me. DM me, everything. And I will speak to you. I want to hear you guys' stories.